Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah This season, inshallah, we'll be also looking at other maraja and their verdicts on the same topics Now, the month of Muharram is amongst us and it is a time that we at Imam Hussain TV would first of all like to send our condolences to the Imam of our time and also to the Ummah on the tragic, tragic events of Karbala and the tragedies that befell upon Abu Abdul Al Hussein. Inshallah, uh, to discuss more will be Sheikh Ali Ma. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh Na, Muharram is one of the most important and you know significant months in the whole of the Islamic calendar, especially for the, the Shias. Millions all over the world come together to commemorate, um, you know, uh, the tragedy of Abu Abdul Al Hussein, and also. To perform Aza, and there's different types of Aza and Azadari. We have dressing in black, holding majalis, even giving out food in the name of Imam Hussein. There's different different methods. One method is also Latham or Matham, uh, as, as they say, the, the chest beating with the eulogies uh, and, and the Latimiyat and, and the Noha. According to Sheikh Wahid, uh, I told Sheikh Wahid Khurasani, is it permissible to have? You know, these nohas and these latmiyat with musical instruments. Sometimes there's a flute, uh, sometimes there's a drum, sometimes there's, you know, a good, I don't know, trumpets and, and, and guitars and such forth. Can we incorporate music in with nohas and latmiyat? According to Sheikh Wahid Khurasani. Inshallah. A'udhu billah as al alim min al shaytan al rajim. Bismillah ar rahman al rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد عظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم جمع صابنا عبد الحسين عليه السلام um, Of course the month of Muharram is the month of grief the month of Aza the month of remembering the heroes of Karbala those who stood for the cause of Allah سبحانه وتعالى stood for the cause of reviving the religion of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he brought as a messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal to the humanity after it was almost demolished by the Umayyah um, Caliphate, the so-called Caliphate uh, rulers and tyranny. So Imam al-Hussain along with his companions and family members gave the blood of their heart as the uh, in, in the ziyarah of Harbain we, we hear this part he gave away for the cause of Allah the blood of his heart in order to guide the humanity to guide them and to uh, bring them out from the ignorance and the darkness of uh, ignorance. Thus, the Imam السلام, sacrificed even his six month old baby as well for this cause. And of course, the aftermath of Ashura, as we know, uh, the journey of the captives from Karbala to Kufa and from Kufa to uh, the Sham, and then back to Karbala and then back to Medina. So this long journey was really painful on the family of Al Hussein alayhi salam, and it seems to be one of the greatest miseries and calamities that uh, poured on the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, in which Imam Al Sajjad alayhi salam was asked about which masaib uh, and calamities was the most severe and difficult, the Imam three times repeated Asham, 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 which means being in captivity and being in this long journey and to see this um, adab and, and, and um, you can say to even torture 
by in throwing stones, throwing fireballs, and so forth, on the heads of the not only the men but only the also the women of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, Zainab, Um Kulthum, Rugaya, Sukaina salam Allah alayhim. So it was a, a great uh, sacrifice even after the event of uh, Karbala. Now, with regard to your question about um, the hukum of the Azza um, and the Matam, which we all, alhamdulillah, attend every year, um, if it was associated with music, mm-hmm. according to Ayatollah Wahid Khurasani, he would clearly state that as a fatwa, that it is haram to use uh, music absolutely in the Aza and even outside the Aza. So in the opinion of Ayatollah Khurasani, you cannot use music at all. Even if you have, let's say, uh, it's not uh, Aza, but you want to do, for example, a, a small party, let's say, a birthday party, and you want to uh, play music. You can't use it, for example. You can't play that music. Wedding, you can't play that music. According to Ayatollah Khurasan, it's haram to use uh, music. Ayatollah Shirazi would also go and uh, follow a similar uh, fatwa that he says, if these instruments were music instruments, then it is an, not allowed to use them. Because we have other instruments that can be used in the Aza, which is the, as it's called in Iraq, the Dammam or mm-hmm. the drum, uh, which is similar to the hexagon shape. Yes. Uh, in that case, you can use this type of, uh, in other words, war drum, as yes. they say, uh, to basically uh, raise the issue of Ashura and the sacrifice of Ahl Bayt salam, that beatings that would show um, the, uh, the, the misery in which this uh, great holy family of Ahl Bayt salam, went through. So yes, you can use this type of war drums, but you cannot use uh, the instruments of music in the Aza, and even after the Aza. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikh Lan. You know, inshallah, during this month, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your amal and also all the amal of all our viewers as well. Sheikhna, topic for today, uh, backbiting. And I mean, this is a, a, a serious disease within our community, unfortunately. Now, what should an individual do if you know, a Muslim is backbiting? Um, let's say I'm there with my friends and we're talking. My friend starts to backbite about someone. What, me as a Muslim, what should I do? Initially, if somebody, God forbid, um, performed this act of backbiting against a Muslim brother, then he needs to go and ask for uh, forgiveness from this individual. If that would cause um, some kind of embarrassment to this individual, he might be insulted, he might be kicked out from that place of, let's say, the house of that individual. Um, any type of insult that he might face, humiliated, for example, then what he can do, he can, of course, ask forgiveness. He does tawbah, astaghfirullah, from this act. And also to ask tawbah and repentance for that individual that he spoke uh, behind his back. So we have a narration which says whenever you remember that individual that you backbite, you say, uh, may Allah forgive his sins, or may Allah forgive him. So whenever you remember him, you say, Allah maghfir lah, or Allah forgive this individual that I backbite. So you try to, um, if you can't, it's difficult to face that individual, then you say, oh Allah, forgive him. So you ask Allah forgiveness for this individual. And of course, to work hard to avoid backbiting. So this is one lesson. We learn the lesson. Next time, I don't backbite. I try to uh, think twice before I talk. Some of the companions, they used to put a pebble inside their tongue just to avoid talking nonsense or talking something haram. So that pebble would remind him that, well, 
Should I talk or should I keep silent? Silent. So we have to uh, educate ourselves to this level of, of taqwa and wara that we avoid talking um, unless it is useful for dunya and akhirah. Shana, what if, you know, I'm, I'm speaking with my friend, I, I had no intention of doing backbiting. I were talking and then someone's name mentions uh, is mentioned and then, you know, I, I mentioned a trait of this person and I had no intention of doing backbiting or something. Even when I said what I said, I, d I, it, it wasn't, it, I wasn't doing backbiting, but because I mentioned the trait, one could assume or could render it to be backbiting. What about in that situation? Again, you go back and you do istighfar and you ask for forgiveness for him. So on, on his behalf, you say, Allah, forgive him. Again, same, same process. So you try to first clean yourself from uh, this act of backbiting and then you ask Allah SWT to forgive him uh, due to this act in which you've committed. Shaykhna, um we are taught in our culture to respect our elders. And sometimes our elders slander and backbite in front of us. You know, it could be one's father, one's uncle, one's grandfather. Um, you know, what, what should we do in that situation? I mean, there's a level of respect. There's a level of that we don't really challenge our superiors, those who are you know, older than us, our, our you know, parents and so forth. What, what, in that situation, what do we do? Well, the individual shouldn't listen to the slandering or the backbiting of others by his, let's say, father or brother, whoever the elder is, uh, to avoid listening. Because even to listen to a backbite it, by itself, it is also a sin. So you have to either to deter and advise the others to stop backbiting or you just leave the majlis. Some ulama used to give that majlis in which there's a ghib backbiting. They would stand up and leave the majlis straight away. Because to listen to a ghiba and backbiting, and you don't show any kind of, uh, um, of, of um, actions, for example, like nahi al munkar, to uh, discourage them from this act, then you also share with that individual this sin. So the best thing is to avoid listening and try to advise and deter the other side uh, in, in somehow, in, in a positive way that you know this is not right it is backbiting slandering and it's it's uh, haram in islam and it's hurting yourself and the others so defaming the others and so forth Sheikhna, some people say that oh it's not backbiting if the person was here in front of me i'd say it to their face now is backbiting you know when you mention bad traits about someone behind their back or in front of them or it doesn't actually matter whether they're there or not, backbiting is backbiting. It is true that the meaning of backbiting or ghibah is to say something that uh, in the back of somebody in which he doesn't like or he doesn't really like to be mentioned. So let's say he committed a sin and you know, and you saw that sin and he doesn't want it to uh, tell others or show others, but you try to spread it. Uh, that's of course backbiting, but even though if, let's say that um, in their presence it becomes some kind of insult, even if it's not backbiting, but it's an insult, you're insulting that mu'min when you're telling him or telling the others that you know, this individual did such and such thing in his privacy. So in his uh, uh, being away from the scene, um, you would backbite him, that is a backbite, if you backbite him. If you do it in front of him or in front of others, then that's some kind of insult. So we have to, back to Allah, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness for ourselves and the others. And he is the one in which conceals the faults. Sattarul ayub. Allah is the one who conceals. We shouldn't expose and reveal other people's uh, privacy and sins and faults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he tries to, I mean, that's one of the acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he conceals these uh, faults and, and sins of the ibad, so he would forgive them in dunya and in the akhirah as well.
Asan, thank you very much, Shaykhna. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask Allah, inshallah, forgive you for your shortcomings, inshallah, to forgive me for my shortcomings. shortcomings. And also, all our viewers, our brothers and sisters, inshallah, may Allah accept all your deeds in this holy month of Muharram, and inshallah, forgive you for your shortcomings. Inshallah, we'll have a new episode uh, next time, and we'll see you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Uh, uh, uh.